there are so many dots to connect. There's so much information to present and connect before the apparently ludicrous starts to make logical sense. The, main, the mainstream media will never ever give you enough time to make those connections. Um, so what I do with that whole reptilian side of my work is I'll talk about it in my own public presentations where I can give it as much time as I decide to give it. I write about it extensively in my books for the same reason. But in the mainstream, I will not talk about it um, uh, because I know that it's going to be reported in the same way. Oh, it's his giant base lizards from the world. And, um, uh, yeah, yeah, you know. What level of consciousness controls the mainstream media? The intellect. Um, and sometimes a very, very, very low level of intellect. And therefore, um, apart from the odd journalist who is more whole-brained, if you like, and uh, multi-level consciousness, not just intellectually consciousness, conscious, then um, um, they're just not going to see it. They're not going to get it. I mean, it's extraordinary that you can talk to um, a lady with no formal education and all the rest of it, and she gets it. Um, and you can see it and can feel it and then you talk to a journalist or uh, an intellectual from Oxford University and they look at you as if you've just walked off um, a spaceship um, because they can't get it because they're not accessing those levels of consciousness that can get it. So of course um, an intellect controlled media um, is going to see me um, as crazy, insane, dotty, I think it's a word I can use, and um, and all the rest of it. So, uh, but you have to accept that. And but I have a, I, I have learned one great thing over the years. People can't unhear something. And the reason that um, uh, enormous numbers of people are now turning to my work, um, overwhelmingly, the reason is because things I wrote about in my books years ago are now happening. That's the key reason. And um, if I had um, not said and wrote what I did, despite the ridicule and the hostility, then they'd have never read it and they'd have never then seen that it's happening now. So we wouldn't be any further along the road. And when you are someone who is challenging the status quo um, in a world where the status quo is not to be challenged, then don't expect that people are going to, you know, pat you on the back and, and say what a wonderful person you are. Um, you, you've got to accept you're going to get ridiculed, you're going to get condemned, you're going to get massively misrepresented. And you just have to accept that that's it. And if you don't like it, well, you know, you know go and do something else because this is what happens when you do what the, the you do. And Well, n n well, you can, you can trust. Um, it's like everything else. Where, where are the people um, coming from? What's the point from which they're observing reality from? So that says, can you trust anything in the mainstream media? Well, you can trust one or two journalists within the mainstream media, but the mainstream media as a whole, absolutely you can't, um, because it's structured um, to tell us lies. Um, and that's uh, not in a way that every journalist is in on the plot. But if you look at the media, what does it do? It takes the status quo, the norms in society at any point, to be the point from which it reports the world. And anyone who is outside of those norms or challenging those norms is by definition um, uh, mad or bad. If we'd have had today's media a few centuries ago, um, they would have ridiculed and condemned in the way they have me, anyone who said the earth was round. Because the, the norm status quo of intellectual society was that it was flat. Um, and, and then when the norm changed, anyone now who says the earth is flat gets the same treatment the round earthers would have got in originally. Um, so the media is simply takes the norms as a point of observation. 
Um, and so if you're outside the norms, don't expect the media to be fair to you. Um, but there are there are people in the uh, on the internet um, uh, who um, I don't agree with everything they say, but they are coming from a place of uh, truth. Uh, not necessarily they get every fact right. I mean, how many of us get every fact right when we're trying to uncover something that doesn't want to be uncovered? But um, it's uh, it's it's where it, where are the people coming from? And I can honestly say that I have never said anything I didn't believe to be true. Um, that doesn't mean that I've got every fact and every dotted I and every cross T right, but I've never said anything I didn't believe to be true. Now, if, you, if you, anyone coming from that perspective, not every last thing they say is going to be 100% accurate, but you know that um, you can trust um, the vast majority of what, what they're saying, and certainly the themes of what they're saying, um, are coming from a place of they believe it. People um, don't trust people, well, uh, let's, let's put it this way, enormous amounts of people do trust me, but um, I... People um, are distrustful of anyone who is saying something that is um, a different from the norm. By definition, it's different. So, oh, this man's strange, and with strange comes um, a, a sense of trustworthiness. So you're always going to have that too, and you just have to accept it. Uh, I would make this point, it's really, really important, is that I am not trying to get anyone to believe anything, that's the point. Because the world is awash with uh, people who are telling others what they should believe and um, how they're wrong if they don't. Um, I'm not doing that. Uh, not only am, am, am I not uh, uh, worried about what people think of what I say and do, it's none of my business. This is one point that people miss. Uh, it's my business to say what I believe to be right and to write what I believe to be right. It's not my business um, what people make of it. That's their business and should always be their business. And we have to respect every individual's right to come to their own conclusion about life themselves and reality. All you can do is say, well, here's some information that you, you won't have heard before because it, it's not allowed in the mainstream. Make of it what you will. And, and to be honest, if... You know, the last 20 years has been a, a real emotional um, onslaught for me, not least through frustration and what have you. But if I was attached to how people accepted my information, I wouldn't be here now, I'd be dead. You know, the emotion would have killed me. So I, um, I'm not attached to how people receive my information. What I'm attached to is the passionate uh, belief that people have a right to hear all information and not just that which the um, establishment decide they're going to hear or not hear. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm a journalist, really, uh, at the uh, intellectual level of this. Um, uncovering the history, background, and methods of operation of this whole um, network of global control. I'm a journalist, uh, but I'm different to other journalists. I don't have an editor. I don't have anyone looking over my shoulder telling me what I can and cannot write, which allows me to follow the information um, and not edit the information on the basis of um, either what I think people will think of me if I say this or on the basis of um, I better not put this in because the proprietor or the editor won't like it. Um, so I, uh, on that level I'm a journalist. I've been to f about 45 countries researching this. I've talked to thousands of people and for instance the whole reptilian thing I didn't sort of sit in a darkened room and come to these conclusions. I just kept meeting people all over the world who'd had experience of it. That's where it came from. And when I first heard it, of course you think, my God, what, what's going on here? What's all this about? Um, uh, but when you have met so many people in so many different countries from so many different walks of life, 
this is where the synchronicity comes in um, um, of who telling you the same thing and the same experiences well then you start to say well either um, I'm gonna shut this off because I know what the reaction of people will be if I say it or this deserves to be um, uh, talked about because this is now you know there's just too many bloody coincidences here too many common themes so um, that that's the way I operate and I uh, I just follow my uh, heart, my intuition, um, and sometimes my head is telling me, no, you don't want to do that today, you don't want to go there, oh, what are you going there for? Um, or used to anyway, it doesn't so much now. Um, uh, but my heart says, I want to go there. My intuition says, go there, and I go there. And, that, and, and that's what, um, where synchronicity comes from. Again, we're back to the same theme again. The intellect or higher consciousness, the head or the heart, um, the, because the uh, intellect sees things as uh, apart and di di divided from each other, synchronicity is the connection of things, right? So it, it, it can have a problem with synchronicity. And so when you have an intuitive feeling to be somewhere, to go somewhere, then the head can start listing all the reasons why you shouldn't go. Oh, you don't want to go there today, look at the weather, all oh, this, blah, blah, blah. And the heart goes, I want to go, I want to go. And when you go, something happens that, that takes you further along the journey which wouldn't have happened if you would listened to the head and stayed at home and and so uh, the great change in my life came in about 1989 1990 when I decided that when my head and my heart were in um, conflict over a um, action then I would go with my heart and you know take the consequences and what I found um, it's very interesting because when you go with your heart you're going with a level of consciousness that is beyond the intellect and the intellect is what controls this reality and through which most people perceive this reality so when you go with your heart you immediately start beating to a different drum you immediately start acting in ways that are different to mainstream society and of course, you're going to get reactions from that, from mainstream society. They're going to have a look at me, they're going to call you crazy, they're going to call you um, insane and, and nutty and all the rest of it. And when people, um, you know, start to receive, not even, not perhaps the extreme level of, of reaction that I got, because I did it publicly, but in their own lives, when they start to get adverse reaction from following their heart because of what they do and where it takes them, a lot of people then, then pull back from the heart and go to their head because they think it's easier that way. But if you stick with it and you, you keep following your intuition, even when your, your, your head intellect's going, see, told you, told you what would happen if you did this. Um, if you keep with it, eventually amazing things start to happen. And you look back and you think, well, not, o not only have these um, um, happened, they've happened because I went with my intuition. And what it happens eventually, is what I found in my life, is the intellect starts observing this. And it starts to see that although when you follow your intuition, you follow your heart, you might get into some scrapes and some challenges, eventually it all works out. Not, uh, not uh, you know, despite following your intuition, but because of it. And what happens then is your, your head and your heart start to sink and you start to think and feel the same things. And so today, it's very rare that my, oh, it's almost, almost non-existent today, that my heart, my intuition will say, I need to do this, and my head will say, you can't, or why I shouldn't. It, it's almost non-existent. The two go together. Uh, they're, they're mates rather than at war with each other as they are in most people, and they were in me um, uh, before this all started.